Hi, so I'm Junda. My blog is at samwise.com. That's also my Twitter handle. So for these slides, if you go to my website, you, can, you are able to view. So no problem with if the podium is blocking. So I've been writing this technical blog diligently for like the past 12 years. From days even before iOS, I was writing. So I just share every stuff that I learned on, on the blog. And for today, my talk is a pretty simple one. It's a feature that I developed last year while I was working for a crypto exchange company. So as you can see from the title, it's a remote localizable string. I believe you have an idea what it does. It's a remote version. You can update those strings dynamically. So as I'm saying, I'm working for this crypto exchange company. Uh, but unfortunately, I was retrenched last month. So actually, my last day is actually tomorrow. Yeah. So crypto is risky. Yeah. So because my company, we got actually like hacked for more than $200 million. Yeah. Still away by hackers. So uh, it's not OKX anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what's next for me? I've been practicing this thing called like intermittent working. So I work two years. Then I spent like six months or even two years working on my indie apps. That's how I've been doing. So I've only done, right now I'm at the, yeah, this phase again, back to indie. So I, I, I would encourage if you are like in between jobs to also do the same because I, I, I think it's rather a good thing. It's like kind of a good balance for your health also because I'm sure when you are working full time for a company, you will have that anger, frustration, where you can't use the latest um, technology. Some are maybe even stuck in Objective-C. <laughs> you can't use Swift data, you can't use Swift UI, etc. So take that time to you know, uh, use these new frameworks in your spare time in your indie apps. So that's how I've come about. Uh, but of course, when I was young, I can do it over the weekends. But once you have kids, no, oh, no, no weekends for you. <laughs> So next is back to the topic on why did we build that remote localizable string. It's really one day my PM was asking me, hey, that typo, have you fixed it? Of course, we can fix it very fast. But the release will take two weeks because we have a bi-weekly cycle, right? Because as big companies, we have our testing process and it's resource intensive, as you all know. So you can't do that. They have to wait. No choice, unfortunately. So that's why I suggested, hey, we can actually do better. How to do better? Yeah, do a remote version of localizable strings. Download it and then use the latest translation. But a caveat, I think this is a feature that if you are working for a company, you can do. If I'm an indie developer, I'll never build this kind of feature. <laughs> it's a waste of, um, okay, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so now, Okay, so that slide is the last slide you'll see pictures, uh, image. The rest of it are code, but it's not too much. So I'll break it into four steps. And the first step is really to fetch all the localizable strings remotely. So I thank the previous speaker for explaining the try it uh, a single week, because with just one line, you can use URL session and you download it. And then the next line is just writing to the file. So, so nothing um, surprising here. But I always appreciate how easy it is to do something like this now. If you are in Objective-C, you'll be writing 10, 10 lines on, and more. The second step is to read the strings format. So I'm sure you all know the localizable strings format look like this, key value. So let's take five seconds to think, how are you going to read the strings format? Okay. So when I was approaching this, I thought that, hey, I'm going to write some puzzle or I'm going to find some third library, uh, third party libraries. But turns out it's not that hard. In fact, NS dictionary has this initializer that takes in the file URL and you can cast it to string string and you get that dictionary of the key values. So this comes from the old NS dictionary. NS dictionary. So the third step is where do you use this 
uh, all these remote strings. And for me, I always have this repo that wraps around the NS localized strings. I'm sure a lot of developers, I think you probably also have some global function or macro to do that, because NS localized strings is like 15 characters too many. <laughs> it's way too long. Plus, in this function that I wrote, I call it ls, you'll see that it can even do things like fallback to your English language or your base language. So you can do a lot more things uh, once you write something like, like this repo. And this is where we can use the remote strings. So now I, I, I add in, I use that dictionary, I got the remote string, and I just return it back. Yeah, it's just as simple as that. This is the last step. But there's one more thing I never mentioned is that localizable strings has also uh, has arguments. So for the arguments case, you have another signature where you take in arguments and then you use the string format and pass in with the arguments. But once we do something like remove localizable string, you, you have to handle the, the, all the scenarios possible because translators, they can just change it and dynamically it will be in the app. And let's say if the translator now carelessly translated this string, which let's say expect an integer, one, two, three, but then they change it to percent add, which becomes a string type, a wrong type will cause the app to crash. So as developer, we have to, we have to take care of all scenarios, even though this is very, very rare. So it's a good time for us to practice test-driven development. So you can do something like this to, to, to write the expected case. And in fact, our test case has covered more than this. This is the most critical because it will cause a crash. But in other cases, it can be missing argument or too many arguments. Yeah, those are more trivial. But uh, nonetheless, write something like that. And what we do here is we provide a string extension called a save format. And in this save format, write a re regex to capture uh, the percent %l or the percent %d type, and then uh, with the regular expression matches, you just loop over it and, and check the type, and then you can, and, and, and can fix it, fix the strings. That's basically what um, this extension does. But I leave out the rest of the code for you all to <laughs> do yourself. So with that, actually I've, come, I've completed uh, what I want to achieve in doing the remote localizable string. But actually we did more than that. We actually hate strings a lot as developers. So <laughs> one of the problems is that I'm, I'm not sure there's no like, where's the source of truth for your strings? Because you can be working on multiple branches. You know, your, your colleague might be working on another feature and add in other strings. Then you might have git conflicts and your translation platform is another place where you store the strings. So what we did also as a bonus is that we moved the whole strings to a separate repo. And then we use git submodule to pull it back. And we, we hook it to the translation platform so that you can push whatever changes to the platform and also pull it to that repo. And with that, right, you are basically washing your hands off all the strings, which is a good thing for us developers. So uh, if you're working for a company, you can suggest this to your PM and impress them. <laughs> and also wash your hands off these strings. Thank you.